Hey everyone, in this video I will be explaining you different laboratory changes that we are going to see in three types of jaundice that is pre-hepatic pre jaundice, hepatic jaundice and post-hepatic jaundice and what all the laboratory findings especially in the serum and in the urine in connection with kind of bilirubin that we are going to see there. So I have a video on uh, causes and different etiologies and uh, signs and symptoms that we are going to see in three types of jaundice that is prehepatic, hepatic and post-hepatic jaundice and the link for that video is there in the description below and also it is appearing in the right upper corner. Now prehepatic jaundice it most common cause for prehepatic jaundice it is hemolytic anemias. Now the hemolytic anemias are the common causes for prehepatic jaundice because of the overproduction of bilirubin. So when the bilirubin is produced too much because of the large number of red blood cells which are dying, so the bilirubin which is coming from spleen, it will be going into the liver for conjugation process. Only thing is there is too much of bilirubin to handle. That's why there will be elevation of unconjugated bilirubin in the serum. So in prehepatic jaundice as I have written here, so I have three columns, I have, sorry four columns and three rows here. In the row I have written prehepatic jaundice, hepatic jaundice, posthepatic jaundice. In the column we have serum unconjugated bilirubin, serum conjugated bilirubin, urine bilirubin and urine urobilinogen. Now let's see in prehepatic jaundice, most common cause as I said is because of hemolytic anemias, any kind of hemolytic anemias, there will be too much of bilirubin, unconjugated bilirubin coming to the liver and in the liver conjugation is going on at a maximum rate, so producing 2 plus conjugated bilirubin but still there will be too much of bilirubin to handle, that is why there will be elevation of unconjugated bilirubin in the serum. So, there will be increase in the unconjugated bilirubin in the serum in the prehepatic jaundice. Now what will happen to the conjugated bilirubin levels? So conjugated bilirubin levels it will be normal in prehepatic jaundice. Usually it will be less than 20% of total bilirubin. So conjugated bilirubin is normal in prehepatic jaundice. Only unconjugated bilirubin is elevated. Now since Conjugated bilirubin is less than 20% of normal, so that is why we don't find urine bilirubin. So, bilirubin is not appearing in the urine, so urine bilirubin is absent. Now, what about urine urobilinogen? Now, too much of unconjugated bilirubin is coming to the liver, so liver is conjugating it, it at a maximum pace, so it means you get large amount of conjugated bilirubin in the bile duct, not that not in the serum. In the bile duct you have more conjugated bilirubin which is getting into the intestine and in the intestine that conjugated bilirubin accordingly it will be converted to urobilinogen and 80 to 90 percent of urobilinogen will go out in the feces, 10 to 20 percent will be reabsorbed back into enterohepatic circulation in that some of the bilirubin escapes and get into urine. So that is why you will see increase in urine urobilinogen in prehepatic jaundice okay so and also there will be increase in fecal urobilinogen in the feces in the stool so increase in urobilinogen in the urine and also increase in urobilinogen in the feces and that makes stool color and the urine color darker in prehepatic jaundice so in a prehepatic jaundice uh, urine color is dark because of increase in urobilinogen stool color is also dark because of increase in urobilinogen or stercobilinogen in the feces and this is what is the serum changes and urinary changes in prehepatic jaundice. So serum unconjugated bilirubin elevated, serum conjugated bilirubin is normal, urine bilirubin is absent and urine urobilinogen is increased along with stool urobilinogen is also increased. Now let us move on to see hepatic jaundice. Hepatic jaundice most commonly is because of hepatitis, different kinds of hepatitis including alcohol, viral hepatitis and alcohol hepatitis. What happens? So there is an inflammation of the hepatocyte. Because of the inflammation of the hepatocyte, 
there will be leakage of contents present in the hepatocyte. That means there will be elevation of unconjugated bilirubin in hepatic jaundice and also there will be elevation of conjugated bilirubin in the hepatic jaundice. So, both the kinds of bilirubin will be elevated here. That is why hepatic jaundice, it will give rise to combined hyperbilirubinemia. Okay. Now, what happens to the urine urobilinogen? Uh, that all depends on how much is the elevation of conjugated bilirubin. Normally, in hepatic jaundice, conjugated bilirubin that is elevated contributes to 50, to, uh, sorry, 20 to 50 percent towards the total bilirubin. That clearly exceeds the renal threshold for bilirubin. So, this bilirubin here, which is water soluble, which is exceeding that 20 percent mark, now it can be appearing in the urine. That is why you will see presence of urine bilirubin in hepatic jaundice. Now, what will happen to the urine urobilinogen? Now, there is increase in unconjugated bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin, urine bilirubin is increased. So, urine urobilinogen can also be increased because your hepatocyte is inflamed. That means enterohepatic circulation may not be going on properly. That's why urine urobilinogen can be little more increased. That means urine color will be darker. But note that urobilinogen in the stool, it will be normal. So, normal stool color, but the dark colored urine is an indication of hepatic jaundice. Normal stool color because urobilinogen in the stool will be normal. Whereas urobilinogen in the urine will be increased. That's because your hepatocyte is inflamed. Enterohepatic circulation is not going on well. It means there will be escape of uh, urobilinogen into the systemic circulation. That's why you, you find urobilinogen there. Okay. So, combined hyperbilirubinemia, presence of bilirubin in the urine and presence of urobilinogen in the urine will indicate hepatic jaundice. Going to the post-hepatic jaundice. Common cause for post-hepatic jaundice is the obstruction in the common bile duct because of the stone. So, stone in the common bile duct and also carcinoma of the head of the pancreas or it may be intrahepatic biliary obstruction, all of them can go give rise to post-hepatic jaundice. So, in post-hepatic jaundice, so bilirubin, it will be normal, sorry, unconjugated bilirubin, it will be normal. So, unconjugated bilirubin is not really elevated that much initially. So, I would say this is normal here. Whereas conjugated bilirubin is elevated in post hepatic jaundice. So, how much conjugated bilirubin is elevated? It will be more than 50 percent. More than 50 percent of bilirubin will be conjugated bilirubin in post hepatic jaundice. And urine bilir uh, bilirubin, because this conjugated bilirubin is exceeding 50 percent here, that is a water soluble bilirubin. So, that is why you will see elevation of urine bilirubin there. Now, if the obstruction is totally complete, like complete obstruction of common bile duct, that means conjugated bilirubin is not reaching intestine because bile duct is obstructed. When the conjugated bilirubin is not reaching intestine, that means it is not converted into urobilinogen. So, you don't find urobilinogen in the, made in the intestine. So, if you don't have urobilinogen made in the intestine, that means Enterohepatic circulation do not have that urobilinogen that means there is no urobilinogen appearing in the urine. So, it means stool do not have urobilinogen and urine do not have urobilinogen. It is simply because there is no formation of urobilinogen because of complete obstruction during that time. So, urine bilirubin, uh, urobilinogen is absent here. Urine urobilinogen is absent and Stool urobilinogen is also absent, that means to stool color in obstructive jaundice will be clay colored or pale colored stool and urine color, since although urobilinogen is absent, but there is a presence of bilirubin in the urine and that will color the urine that is a tea colored urine. So, in obstructive jaundice, you will see tea colored urine, that is this tea here, tea colored urine, tea colored urine and clay colored stool. So, tea colored urine and clay colored stool. Alright, so tea colored urine and clay colored stool. These are the two things that you can see, uh, look for in post hepatic jaundice. So, these are the changes that you see in prehepatic, hepatic and post hepatic jaundice. And of course, we are going to do a certain enzyme estimation in uh, prehepatic, hepatic and post hepatic jaundice. Just to give you a brief uh, uh, outlook about those enzymes. 
In prehepatic jaundice, we see elevation of AST, aspartate transaminase, because it is coming from red blood cell. In uh, pre uh, hepatic jaundice, you see elevation of alkaline, uh, sorry, alanine transaminase, that is ALT, aspartate transaminase. These two enzymes are elevated out of proportion to alkaline phosphatase and uh, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase. And also if the hepatitis is because of alcohol induced hepatitis, so uh, during that condition, AST will be elevated much more than ALT because uh, acetaldehyde which is a, a metabolic intermediate of alcohol it can damage the mitochondrial membrane and release aspartate transaminase present in the mitochondria and that will contribute to more elevation of AST compared to ALT there. Now in the post hepatic jaundice so the uh, ductular enzymes are elevated like alkaline phosphatase, gamma glutamate transpeptidase, 5 prime nucleotidase these enzymes are elevated much more than alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase. These are the some of the things related with prehepatic, hepatic and post-hepatic jaundice. I hope this video has helped you in understanding this and also more detailed, video, uh, detailed video on this you can see in the description below. Thanks for watching.